Hi, welcome to this presentation on interpreting data. In this presentation, we'll be talking about data and the key concepts of central tendency and variability. The objectives of this presentation are to understand the difference between central tendency and variability and to understand why we have to discuss them when interpreting data. Now, scientists ask questions about the natural world. So if we were looking at this picture here, we might ask questions like, how has the introduction of fish affected the frog populations in this lake? Or what factors determined the biodiversity of this ecosystem? Then we'd go out and we would collect some data. So here's a field notebook with a bunch of data, and then we might enter that data into a spreadsheet. Now that's an important part of the process, but now we have to look at the, that data and figure out what it means. It doesn't really tell us anything by itself. So this process of making sense of data is what we call interpreting data. Now here's an example from PBS NewsHour. Uh, two experts looked at some data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and came to different conclusions. One concluded that we have too many students graduating from four-year colleges and that in the next 10 years we'll have uh, our economy won't be able to support that many students. There won't be jobs for them. Uh, the second expert, looking at the same data, concluded that we have too few students graduating from four-year colleges and that in the next 10 years we won't be able to supply empl employers with enough qualified applicants uh, for jobs in our economy. So depending on how we look at data, we might have different interpretations. We make sense of data using three basic tools. Uh, one is graphs. <laughs> A second is statistics, and a third is a data table. Now, graphs and data tables are basically visual ways of representing data. And if you'd like more information about graphs, there's a graph resources folder in our biology Google Drive. Uh, statistics, then, is looking at ways of manipulating or analyzing the numbers to find out what they mean. And that'll be the focus of this presentation. So for statistics, we have basically three big ideas, central tendency, variability, and significance. Now, significance is more advanced, and for our purposes in 10th grade biology, we won't be doing much with significance, but if you go on to AP Biology or go on to a career in the sciences, that'll be a really important idea. Central tendency is just basically the normal or average values of a data. The most common measure of central tendency is mean, uh, that you might be familiar with. Mean, of course, is another word for average. Uh, so oftentimes in school we have it, we, you know, we get a grade based on average scores. Variability, on the other hand, has to do with how much the data is spread out. So if we look at this graph here of celebrities and we're asking a question about how tall they are, we can see that we have Snooki all the way over there on the left at four foot nine, and then Hulk Hogan on the far right at six foot seven. If we took all of their heights and put them together, we might conclude that on average, celebrities are around five foot six. Uh, right there around Justin Bieber. So he would sort of be an average height celebrity, maybe somewhere between five foot six, five foot seven, somewhere in there. Uh, but if we look at the variability in the data, what we see is that their actual heights are spread out quite a bit. Some celebrities are really short and some celebrities are really tall. Here's another example of looking at this idea of central tendency and variability. So you can see here, these are average heights of men and women. You can see the average height of women, the very top of the pink curve there is somewhere around 160 centimeters. And the average height for men, the most common height for men is somewhere right around 180 centimeters. So generally speaking, men are taller than women, but of course there are a lot of women who are taller than some men and a lot of men who are shorter than some women. You can see the overlapping there. Okay, so the central tendency would be that sort of normal height for men and women, but the variability would tell us how spread out the population are. So looking at the blue curve there for men, you can see that there are men that are upwards of 200 centimeters tall, and there are men that are 140 centimeters or less in height. So there's actually quite a spread, but on average, men tend to be somewhere around 180 centimeters tall. Variability basically gives us an idea of how confident we can be about our data and about the patterns that we observe. Here's an example graph uh, showing the number of saves for a baseball team uh, and in relation to how many games above 500 they are. So it's looking for a relationship there. Do 
uh, teams that have more saves also have a better record over 500. And you can see they plotted all these points and made a best fit line. And then down below, it gives the equation for that line and also the R squared value. Now, R, R squared is one measure of variability. It tells us how well those data points fit to that line. In this case, the R squared is 0.46, uh, which is actually pretty low. Any R squared below 0.5 is generally considered not a very strong relationship or fit. Uh, R squared values uh, above 0 0.8 are often considered a very good fit. So in this case, the relationship between saves and the record above 500 uh, for baseball teams is not actually very strong. There are probably other factors that explain, uh, explain their record or explain the number of saves. Here's another one. This is a bar graph. In this graph, they're looking at the uninsured adults in King County, which is in uh, Seattle, Washington, and looking at their income levels. So what we see is at the highest income levels, 75,000 or more per year, uh, only on average 2.6% of people are not insured, whereas at the lowest income levels on the left side, uh, below $24,999, uh, we have much higher percentages of people who are uninsured. Now what they've done in this graph is they've also included error bars. Error bars are another way of measuring variability uh, using standard deviation or standard error and they basically show us the range of values that represents the actual uh, average or mean in the population. So you know from the data that they have it might be that 43 percent of people between fifteen thousand and twenty four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars a year are uninsured, but that's just kind of on average. Um, that's that's not a, necessarily a specific number that is absolutely correct for the whole population because, of course, they're not measuring every single person. So when we look at those error bars, like for the last two columns on the left, we see that they overlap quite a bit. What this tells us is that there's probably not really that much difference between those two categories of income in terms of the percentage of uninsured adults. Now as we move toward the right we see there are still error bars but they actually don't overlap very much at all and this tells us that we can be more confident uh, in our average values and more confident that there really is a difference between these different income levels. So in terms of statistical measures there are basically three big measures of central tendency mean, median, and mode and in terms of variability there are lots and lots of statistical measures but some of the more more common are range, R squared, standard error, and standard deviation. Now I've put an asterisk by the measures that are most likely to be useful in biology class. We use our interpretations in the data as evidence to support a claim. A claim is just basically a statement that answers our question in as clear a way as possible. And evidence is the uh, data that we have to support that claim. So here's an example if we were asking that question about how fish are affecting frog populations in that lake, uh, we might conclude that our claim might be that the introduction of fish has resulted in a significant decrease in frog population. And then we're explaining why using specific pieces of evidence. So you can see there I'm citing my data. I'm talking about the average uh, density of frogs per meter squared in the lake before and after the fish and also comparing it to a control group. And I'm actually citing specific evidence. I'm not just saying the population decreased, but I'm showing how I know that based on the data. A claim then is an answer to a scientific question. The variables are almost always a part of the claim uh, because the question is asking about the relationship between variables. And our evidence then is our information from graphs and statistics. And when we interpret that evidence, we need to say what it is, and what it means and why it's important. So hopefully from this presentation you've been able to uh, develop your understanding of these objectives and understanding how central tendency and variability are different and also why it's important to use them in your analysis of data.